Welcome to Nick Lenz's Comic Corner Classic Lost Known Classic. This is episode number 27, 03, and double number 2597. Yeah, this is going to be a bit of a lengthy one uh, because we're discussing two omnibus books Becker Omnibus Vol Bronze Age Volume 2 and Robin Omnibus Volume 2. Now, these collect various stories related to several related to the Batman family, to the comics, of course, in the case of Robin, Batman, to the comic friends. Well, in the case of Detective Comics, I'm discussing basically for uh, fully a lot of these issues. Some anyways. The two of them discussing two full issues. I'm also discussing one bonus issue that's not collected here. Uh, mainly because I wanted to cover this one. But first of which, we're talking about Batman Family. Which of course collects the Becker and Robin stories. And we also have Man Bat here too. Yes, it's a three-way team-up story. Uh, and that's kind of basically what we got here for Batman Family for the remaining, um, like, nine issues of the series. So, in the case of, so basically, yeah, Batgirl taking the opening story, second story is basically Man Bat, and the third story basically is, um, Robin's story as well. Mm-hmm. So, in the opening story, we're introduced to Batgirl's brother, Tony Gordon. You're thinking, Tony Gordon? What, what about Jim Gordon Jr.? Not really. Uh, the thing with this guy is he's not very around very much at all. Yeah. For being Barbara Girl Gordon's brother, he very rarely ever appears. Like he appears in this issue here, issue 19 of this very book. He also has an issue of Adventure Comics... Yes, Adventure Comics. Or he guest stars in a Superboy story. And, well, he does make a return a little bit later. Which we're going to discuss that. It seems kind of weird, though, they establish this guy. Like, the thing with to Tony Gordon is that he is, well... he He's like an exact duplicate of his father. So, if you're curious, this guy here is Barbara Gordon's brother, Tony Gordon. Yep. By the way, the stories in this one, uh, the Batgirl story is Bob Reskins and Jose DeBio. Bob Reskins on the second story with Marshall Rogers on the, on the second artwork. That's, Jim, that's the Man Bat story. Rally Round Robin, that's Bob Reskins' Erd Nabok. Mostly, put, aside from the debut of Tony Gordon, we also debut a character named Captain Arrow. Who only appears as one story. And that was he just a, basically a bank robber who disguised himself as a, a pilot. Yep. The Man Bat story, uh, he takes on this group known as the Sunset Gang. Who appear in this very comic. And they appear two more times after this. They, they appear in the following issue and then they appear in Bass of DC 51. Which is a reprint book. So technically, in the way, this group will appear a couple times. Yeah, and apparently, like the leader is like a woman. Yeah. Of course, also in here we do see the return of the outsider, but I should point out though it's a duplicate. Yeah, it's mostly put a duplicate character who becomes the outsider. Yep. Of course, also his wife Francine is in the story too. Um, Rally Round Robin just... I'll stop with some thieves and that's pretty much it. Um... Not really a lot here for comes to Batman 12, aside from Batman Family 12. Uh, 13 is Return of the Outsider. Yeah, Alfred becomes Outsider one more time in this story. Uh, this will be the last officially he ever be the Outsider. Yeah, it's a one-off return for him, and it's a final appearance of, of course... By the way, uh, Don Newton and Marshall Rogers does the artwork for this one. Uh, Batman 4 14, it's like 
Uh, by the way, the book ends with basically where Batwoman the sword gets melted away. And that leads to issue 14, which is Bat Batgirl, and of course she later discovers she's fine by the end of the story. Bless you! Yeah, and of course, you got spirits by Kid Flash. Also, in the case of uh, Robin's girlfriend at the time in this book, who was the daughter of a police chief, uh, he... Well, basically, this the relationship with this girl here would cause some ramifications. In, by the way, there's a backup issue in this one, 14. It's a man-bad story. Take on some guy called some extortionist. Okay. In issue number uh, 15, find the back cave and rule the world. Yeah, kill him off the cavalier, go hunting for the back cave. They do find it, of course, but they don't discover his way as Batman. Uh, then we have in the backup story, we have Mamma Tech with Jason Bard, a former love interest of Barbara Gordon. Yeah, he actually made his debut appearance in issue 392 of the Detective Comics. And his appearance was very sporadic over the years. At one point, he has his own feature detective. Mm hmm. Yep. Yep. Then we have an issue 16. We have Robin Batgirl team up with Harlot the uh, Dula Dent to take on five and one. Yes, five and one. There's even on the computer of Betty Kane, a one of a terrible character. Uh, and then we take on then we have Man Bat Jason but like a sniper, a yeah, Man Bat story. Yeah, apparently this, this this story here the this one here was also collected in the Legends Dark Knight by Michael Golden who. They just basically collect a lot of the, the Batman family issues, which, yeah, when I get to this one, it's going to be not much as good as this one, per se. Not really. Uh, but I'll discuss that one in the future. Don't worry about that. And then, of course, basically with uh, issue 17, of course, this this one features a appearance by the Huntress. Now, Huntress, I believe this story was, I discussed this one already in... Um, Actually, I thought it was. I think it may be like there. I think it was a Huntress, Huntress Origin, I think it was. Yes, uh, basically her stuff from bat from the last three issues of this book I've discussed already in the uh, Huntress Origin trade. Uh, which collect issues 18 and 20. So, kind of in the way of I discussed that one. Mm -hmm. But not this one for some reason. Yeah, this one's not there. I'm not sure why. I think this was the first time they met the Huntress. And for some reason, they decided to not collect it there for some reason. But she then got a feature in Batman Family for the last three issues of the book, which I've discussed already, so I don't know how to talk about that. Uh, Batman himself had a story for issue number 18. Yes, where mostly put for this one, it just basically Batman take on a group known as the Gargoyle Gang. Yeah. And then we have Robin, they take on some art thieves in his own story. Batgirl teams with takes on Madame Z uh, Zodiac. Yes. A character who actually returned after this issue. Yes. Believe it or not, she's in issue 17 this very book, and periodically appeared in issue 18. She can be one of the world's finest for a few issues. Yes, world's finest. Where she became regular, she became sort of a minor Batman villain. Just cause. And Man Bat, basically, it's like, oh, he thinks he's cured, but not really. Thanks to a guy called Snowfu. Which, uh, this was not his day here. It was actually 11 this very book. Uh, this actually would be his last appearance until, uh, his until he appeared in, uh, 
in a hero hotline. And I just want to discuss that already. In issue, by the way, we have Denny O'Neill in the opening story. Bob Reskins in the opening, on the final of murder. That's the Robin story. I saw the Pentagon. It's also Bob Reskins. He does a lot of writing here. Um, Paul Levis is the only one who does, he does the, the last one here. And then for issue number 19, uh, we have a Batman story. Done by Danny Hour the by Michael Golden. Which is mostly put just Batman working with the, uh, like, because he goes to our country this way. He goes to basically, and he goes to uh, some snowy mountains to place. But he's also like goth because that's Danny like doing. We have uh, basically Batgirl taking on some Chinese Take on some, uh, a, take on Wu Fung's, like, it, like a gang of Chinese villains in China of all places. Yep. Uh, the Robin story has appearance by Dula Dent and take on a person known as the Raven. Yes, a character who would appear again after this. Uh, he appear after this issue here. He later pop up in Robin's feature for Tetsu Comics, and that'll be it for him. Man, of course, still deals with Snowfu. And, and this will be his penultimate appearance until that, uh, well, that Hero Hotline book. And then the final issue of this book, we have Ragman have feature. Yes, he teams up with Batman. I think it's someone called Willie. And the book, is, this actually was not done by Daniel. Neal. This is done by David Vern Reed. Uh, the Power of the Sewer. Uh, that is a Robin story. Team's it's a Robin and Batgirl story, where a team with an elongated man and Ray Tornado take on a guy called Power Sower. And we have a Man Bat feature. Once he teams up with Jason Bard, they on Gotham Gorillas. Yes, seriously. And then we have a Hunter story in this one. That's pretty much it for this book. Uh, Private and Man Bat. That's Bob Reskins. Uh, the artwork is two out of the three stories discussing here. Talking about Michael Golden. Don Heck does the middle one. Uh, but that's Batman Family in a nutshell. Uh, really fun series. Now, I had heard the reason the book ended. Now, you might be thinking, was the book canceled due to low sales? No. The book was actually a lot better than Detective was. And apparently DC did not want to let Ted go. So, they actually were considering canceling Detective. But, wait, hmm. Why don't we just... Take this really popular selling book and merge with Detective. Boom. Solve the problem. And that's basically what happened. So after 20 issues, the stories of this book moved over to Detective. And that kind of indirectly saved the title. And that lasted about 15 issues for it got reduced down just Batman and have it sort of Batman and back up for Batgirl. I'll discuss that in a bit. But Batman Family, great title. Um... They either have a brief miniseries in 2002, but that had nothing really much to do with this at all. But, yeah. I The Batman Family series, great book. I give the whole series basically a 10 out of 10. But, yeah, great series overall. Great way to explore these characters. But next up, before I discuss, well, Detective Comics, there is a couple other things I want to discuss before that. That being... Batman issues featuring the, well, his backup, Robin's backup story for for, for Batman for issues 333, 337, 339, and 34143. I'm also discuss his DC Comic Presents issues for Batman 333. Yeah, by the way, the backup story, the, the stories of a Marvel movement are RFI are in network. It is mostly but Ke- Robin team up with Cat One. We also get appearance by King Faraday. I think it's some Chinese criminals. And then after skipping a few issues, returning in 337, his feature. They have a book, which is basically eight pages, by the way. Or he teams up with, it's a circus story, where he teams up with Cleveland Brand. Who's Cleveland Brand, might ask? He's Boston Brand's twin brother. Yep. Who, uh, in pre-Flashpoint, he died. 
Yeah, he died in Dead Man Volume Number Two. Yeah, and then of course we have for three thirty nine. We have Robin take on some kind of Jojo Jones at Circus. Yep. Yeah, big Brendan Richards that one in three thirty nine. This one has it's mostly put just a telling a retelling of Robin's origin story. That's kind of basically what it is here. But then we went to four forty one. Excuse me, 341, excuse me. Where well, Robin appears in the third stir for this one. It's where basically Rob wraps his feature with uh, his whole thing with uh, the Haley Circus. And then 342, it just him taking on some satanic ritual. By the way, it's by Jerry Conner, arc by Trevor Eden. And then basic over 343, which I think this was the, was this the last one? Yeah, this was the last one basically for his own feature. Oddity's End. He just captures one criminal and that's it. That's kind of basically what we have here. Uh, not, it's not really that bad of a story per se. It's not really like, not like, like, not a lot of noteworthy stuff, per se, for this one. Not really. Uh, but... Oh. Before I discuss this one. Before we talk about the Tether Comic, let's talk about... The Tether Comic from 38. Now, the reason why I'm discussing these ones is because... Uh, Superman has a team up with... Him, uh, I think it's thirty eight, wasn't it? Did I type it there? Oh, it was thirty one. Thirty one. My mistake. Thirty one. Yeah, an issue. Uh, thirty one. Jerry Conway does the opening for this one with uh, he records with with uh, Roy Thomas, and there's a backup feature of this one with Robot. What happened to Robot Man? Um, mostly put exactly this one. It just, just take on some circus stuff because of course that uh what would happen to Robot man it's mostly put exactly like it's like a follow-up exactly what happened to him we're saying Yeah, the thing with him is Robot Crane. His real name being Chuck. One time he took the name of Chuck Grayson. Uh, no, he's not uh, related to Dick Grayson at all. Well, maybe a loose relative. Uh, but he's technically the first Robot Man. And then for issue number 58. Once again, we have a team of Bat with Rob and the Elongated Man to take on the Intelligibles. Or the Untouchables. Yeah. Named after the movie. And this comic was pretty much their debut appearance. And they only appeared in this comic once. They mostly put just appeared in Outsiders, which is discussed as issues already. Showcase uh, 93. A couple issues of Hawk and Dove, Volume 3, and one issue of Avengers Superman. That's simply it for them. But good issues overall. But in the case of we're for issues uh, 481 to 499, before I discuss the other issues. Now, for these issues in particular, um, kind of discuss mostly almost everything for these issues per se. Uh, 4042, we'll discuss the whole thing for those two. 
But for 43 to 499, not the entire of those issues. Uh, I'm skipping over the Don Newton art, artwork stores because those are collected in, the, in a trade. I'll discuss those later. And I'm also skipping over the Black Lightning feature because I discussed it already. And the reason I'm discussing also for 40 and 42 because, well, why not? They also have features in this book for uh, Man Bat as well. Yes. Now, Don Newton's story is actually the... Uh, now, the opening story itself is mostly about just Batman going to England issue with, with Alfred. Yes. And then, of course, basically, you have Robin being himself. He continue as Robin. Trying to have three new co Robin costumes. While taking on this group known as Maze. Yes. Maze. Yeah, taking on them for the next few issues. Mm-hmm. Batgirl herself mostly put just, uh, just... Takes on takes on Wolf Fang. Man Bat, of course, team still teams up with Jason Bard. Taking on some criminals in the in some night scene. For four eighty two, we have the death of a character named Xavier Simon, who at one point looked like he worked with. Uh, Ultra Humanite. Yeah, you could say basically this is just two two ish appearance for him. Yeah. Uh, Batgirl basically they finish up our story with uh, Wolf Fang in four eighty two. And then we also have, we also have from four eighty two to four eighty six a feature for Etrigan a Demon. Take on some guy called Baron Time for these few issues. Yep. Yeah, despite the fact he was a man bad villain, for some reason they had him fight at your gonna deem for these issues. I don't know why, it's weird. But that's kind of basically what it did here for this one. And of course they do acknowledge the fact that Steve Dicko did create well they do acknowledge basically Stiko did create the character, so why not? Yeah, and then the Batmite of story, just just a hilarious comedy of basically like Batmite just dealing with like Meeting the DC creators, meeting Al Mogroom, and he told him Bob Ruskins, Bob Smith, Jessica Harris, Mike Golan, Matt Chima, and Paul Levitz. And Robin deals with Maze in issue 42. In 43, this issue in particular is a key issue for Robin because this is where he breaks up his girlfriend, Lori. Yes, the girlfriend he's had since the start of his backup feature run. And this issue in particular ends that particular relationship. And because of this, this is one of the things that lead. This is one of the things that bothers him in his. Excuse me. In the detective in the in night in, in uh, new Teen Titans for the next couple of years because Starfire obviously has thing for him, but he he has not gone with his relationship with Laura. He had just broken up with her, and basically he didn't want to do a rebound thing. Yes, and in forty three, so I think we end the whole Laura thing with that one. Uh, this is. This is the one where I'm, this is one basic. I'll discuss the nine new stuff later, but we also start a human target feature. Yes, written by the late Lean Wee and hard by Howard Chicken. Uh, David Batgirl. This is mostly a soldier going David Batgirl for an issue. Yes, a soldier in DC. Yeah, and also this period of time Barbara Gordon still so Congresswoman, but before this before this little run wraps up, she basically is trying to run again, and then she's working for somebody else now. Yes. Uh, if you're curious how long does human target appear in this book for I don't think very long it's basically Christopher Chance the original one the one he uh, appeared in um, Tom King's run for uh, his, human, his human target run uh, he appears here for three for about a few issues. He appears for 383, 384, 486, and 483. He returns for 500. For him, it's just, just standard uh, human target stuff. Robin, of course, basically, like, he makes it with Elton, and of course, the Raven makes, it, makes, makes their final appearance in the book. So, yeah. So... If you're wondering why in the Teen Titans book, why basically Robin's has a relationship with Starfire, read this issue, and this basically explains the reason for it. And then 484. Uh, 
Yeah, 484. Um, human target issue. It just... Basically, human target is like a spy feature. And this issue here has a guest appearance by a recurring character from his... From, from the Axe Comics run. He guest stars here for this issue. He appears again in 493 as well. He does appear a couple more times after this. And that's pretty much it. In the background story... It's her face... It's her... This starts a feature for her trying to figure out who actually... Uh, it's, it starts a brief storyline... Or she probably finds out who kills the father. It's always resolved in a few, in basically in a few issues. Uh, once again, for uh, Robin, so for the second time, we're telling his origin story again. And then we have a story for Batman. No, it's not that done. It's somebody else. Uh, the Galileo Solution. Um, they say it was Untold Tales of Batman featurette. This will appear in Batman Volume 1, but. Basically, this is replaced with a man bad stories. It's a really interesting story. Just him solving a quick mystery and him working the second bat cave. And then 485. Yeah, th yeah, this one basically for this one is a weird one where, like, you have Robin talk with the chief of police. Now, the chief himself does not know the fact that that uh, his daughter broke up with, with basically her boyfriend, Dick Grayson. He does not know this at this point. So, yeah, they're just talking. There's a dead body nearby. And all of a sudden, for a strange reason, we have two, two, two guys drive up in their car... And they try to take something from the body, and then later on the body is alive, walking around. It's a weird story, to say the least. I'm not sure what the heck the writers were thinking of when it comes to this one. Yeah, and this is basically the uh, 45, like I mentioned, is I think this was the finale for this one. Uh, then we have the Untouchable Crook. Yeah. Yeah. Mostly put this one just with corruption in the uh, corruption in Congress. It's a recurring story that lasts for a little while. And for uh, the Man Best Stories one. It's a retelling of his backstory. For 45. 46, this is the one that ends... Uh, because Man Man basically is not here for this issue. Uh, we have Alfred have a story here. Yes, Alfred. So, human target. Uh, these with sea devils. Batgirl goes to kill him off in the next issue here. Alfred, of course, basically deals with a hostage... And then, of course, Robin, of course, his story. One of two times he fights a Batman villain in the story. This one being the freaking Scarecrow. Yep. <clears throat> Where it's like, oh, well, we have much to go on. And it's like, Robin's like, really? He just climbs to the grave and pulls out some straws. It's like, what, what's the thing about that? You ever heard of the Scarecrow? He's like, yeah, didn't you, didn't you bat and put the guy in jail? He's like, yeah, he, he must have broke out. Yeah, it's quite obvious with Scarecrow. Yep. And then, of course, you have a Roy Raymond. You're thinking, who the heck is Roy Raymond? A TV she was a TV detective who uh, was an old school character. They, apparently, for some reason, uh, they decided to bring back in the comic for some strange reason. Yeah, after his feature ended. Let's see. 
Like his feature, uh, last time he had like he had a feature it ended with two ninety two. Uh, this was actually his penultimate in the book. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he just he's here for like a one off issue. Mm-hmm. What do you do with Morgan Edge? Yes. And then we have Dick Racing on the Germany for an issue. Uh, there's a reprint of Odd Man, and we have Batgirl. And of course, where she tries to <clears throat> run for Congress, though she realizes she's losing anyways. Yeah, as for why they couldn't have her win more one term, I don't know. It's weird. And of course, also, people were trying to fight her over an anti crime bill. I'm thinking, wait a minute, well, wasn't this bill passed in a uh, new I'm sorry, It must be a different one because. I highly doubt it's the same one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've been talking for 30 minutes, but told you this way, likely. Yes. So, uh, Tales of Gotham City last day. This is a really fun one. Where we have this, the te- we have this, we have this patrol officer who has been working the subways for, for 25 years. And this issue is his last day in the job. And he's like, 25 years, never counts a single crook. He just basically just looked on a train. Power go. He was informed before that the power was going off for one minute. And in that period of time, a criminal was on the train, escapes, supposedly. And it turns out that the person was actually hiding in the car. But it turns out that this is one of two criminals. It turns out this bearded guy is the one they were looking for. And it's like, hey, you just on your promotion. It's like, well, I can't. I just retired. But really good story. I love this one. So yeah, Barbara Gordon lost her election, so she, well, decides to do something else. Yeah, and then we have a Longer Man feature. Yes, a Longer Man story. Where it takes a couple of criminals. Robin, of course, deals with uh, a kidnapping. Yeah. And then moving on to 489. Yeah, occasionally these stories will actually have these tales of Gotham City where nothing with Batman. Which I found that was quite interesting. Then we have a Commissioner Gordon story. Yes, a Commissioner Gordon story. We deal with the rioting prisoners at Gotham State Penitentiary. And we have Batgirl and Robin team over a story. Doing some mind warping stuff. We have the Adam. Yes, the Adam up here for a story. Why not? And then we have Alfred have another one. Just uh, deal with fake butlers. And then we have, I think, which one was the one we'll do with Don Noon? Uh, it's not the, oh, the opening story is not done by it's not Jim Matias. It takes a guy called the magician goes more to magi- mystic. So interesting stuff here for this one. Oh, who does the story for this one? Uh, Commissioner Gordon's Paul Cupberg. Uh, Batgirl and Robin, that's Jace Jaxi Harris. The Adam is Bob Ruskins. Alfred is also Bob Ruskins as well. For $4.90. Uh, this is the one that starts a Black Lightning feature, and I'm not going to discuss that one because I've discussed that already. And another comic corner. So, with the Batgirl story, she deals with a sniper in this one. And then we have a GCPD officer. A female one, mostly. Yes. And then we have Daily Answers. And apparently he's, he has new... Robin has new girlfriend this one. Strange. Yeah. Apparently he's rebound from uh, breaking up with Lori. And then 491... We have the or Jason Bar told in the story. You have Robin dealing with a death dealing with a with a baseball player. Yep. Backer, of course, someone's trying to kill her. Jason Barr, Mike David Barr, Robin is Jack C. Harris, and the backer one is Carrie Burkett. Four ninety two. Yes, uh, the decided to back her that lasts for the remaining issues this one. Lasts for a few issues before they wrap it up quickly. Uh, 50 turns million sold. This is a one-shot story. It's not a reprint, mostly. It is just a... Just a day in the life of some people in Gotham. Uh, Man Bat is just basically kind of a street gang. 
Robin, of course, well, deals the penguin in the story. Yes, yeah, second time deals with a regular villain. Yeah, apparently this is referenced in a Batgirl special. We'll discuss that soon. In 493, by the way, the third and last feature, the feature of Batman Family. Um, we have a Red Tornado story in here. Yes, a Red Tornado story. Or it takes on a drug dealer. Robin, the man who wears green, gets her by Lucius Fox in the story. Yeah, apparently the lawyer. There's a lawyer prison issue who... Who was looking at the Robin saying he was a bit overzealous. Yep. Uh, then we have a human target story. Just deals with that. And then we have a Batgirl story. Deals with a guy called Camarot. Who, um... Returns at knowing after this. Yeah, then 494. The second now, yes, you realize the way you've been talking almost 40 minutes these these comics. No, well, don't worry, I'm almost done. Yes, uh, Tales of Gotham City. Uh, basically, a runner uh, basically saves some kids. Batgirl, Lesser Evil. A lot of this stuff basically is like social commentary for for basically Batgirl stories. Um, Robin, of course, deals with a hop, deals with a murder, and that's it. Apparently, uh, this issue is no worthy for the first appearance of the Crime Doctor, Earth One version of the character. Yeah, he'll I'll discuss him later on. Four ninety five. This is also Robin. This is the issue here where, uh, with the exception of Batman and Rob, Batgirl, all features are dropped from the book. It's with the very next issue is reduced out of two stories. Uh, Robin, I do I do know the reason why for that. The other one, I'm not really sure. So let's talk about it. So, uh, Arano saves someone uh, saves someone a fire. Uh, Batgirl's one basically takes on their crime boss. Uh, Robin, of course, basically. Uh, this issue here with nobody for the final appearance of Chief Chief McDonald. Yep. A guy who's been a recurring character in the Robin feature for a long time. Yeah, appearing since 445. Yeah. Of the Sith comic, which I believe was one of Robin's earliest backup features. Yeah, one of his earliest backup features he just had appear in. Mm -hmm. And this suddenly probably be his last appearance in comics. And because this issue here, Vic Grayson drops out of college, and well, okay, so behind the scenes, the reason why that the Rod feature ended this book because. Marvel been wanting for Teen Titans very badly. And that's pretty much the reason for this. Of why his feature had to end with this issue. So after 15 straight issues of having him feature this book, it is dropped. Uh, in the case of Black Lightning, I think maybe because it was needed for Outsiders. Presumably. Oh, and who does those stories there? Trial uh, Into the Fire, that's Bob Ruskin's. Batgirl, Carrie Burkett, uh, and Robin, Jack C. Harris. And then, of course, starting with this issue here in 96, we're basically reduced down to two stories. We have Batgirl take on a character known as Dr. Voodoo for a few issues. Yes. Where after this one issue, he pops up again for 51502. Yeah. do some voodoo master for like next couple issues and as for the remaining issues uh basically starting with 497 to 499 it's pretty much a three-part feature it's a three-part story where back or barbara gordon is framed for murder yes 
which of course she's cleared by by four ninety nine. But now I'll talk about the one issue not collected in trade, though a couple stories have been collected in trade here. Uh, and that being the Tactic Comics five hundred. Now two stories collected in trade here. There is uh, about a few stories here for Batman. Uh, the Hawkman story discussed in a uh, previous video. Uh, there is. Now, these ones have been talked before. Uh, I think uh, Too Many Crooks. I think that one's discussed in the. Um, let's see. Uh, Once Upon a Time, that was. Uh, let's see. Once Upon a Time, that was the, that was the second, Bat, second Batman story. This one uh, discussed that in Tales of Lean Ween. I have discussed the Hawkman story. And there's also a story here about my comment Fantino. Uh, what happened when Batman dies? Uh, that is the final story for this one. But to kill Legends, Al Burnett is most Batman Robin team of the Phantom Stranger. We have we have a single appearance of the Earth Five version, Lieutenant Gordon. Yeah, really, this one is Slim Brady. Uh, Slim Brady. Uh, those who never played with this guy here, he is an old school character. First appeared in the first issue of the Tecta Comics. So, of course, you appear here 500. Yeah, he's a detective who later became a recurring character in, in uh, Ed Brubaker's Run for Catwoman. And this actually was returned to the book first time in years. Like, if you're curious, though, his, his, his feature of issue 1, it stopped at issue 151. This actually was returned to the book since issue 151. Which, that issue came out in 1949. And this came out in 1981. It's roughly about 32 years later. A long good man just saw a, uh, doing, I was doing a story Edgar Allan Poe. Uh, Batman character's a guy called Greyface, just a criminal. Uh, Hawkman story discussed already. And that's kind of it discussed here when it comes to... Uh, 500. Great issue. Um, I think there was one story here where Batman, uh, basically the Slim Brady one had guest appearance by Captain Compass, Human Target, Jason Barr, Misto, Powell, Osment, Roy Raymond. Why these characters here? Because all these characters are start in Detective Comics. Yes. Yep. And since I discussed 501 to 50. Two already, so we're going straight to 505. And yes, I am almost done, so don't worry about that. I'm talking for quite a while about these issues, so yeah, we're almost done. Uh, Hunchback Killer, uh, two parts told by Carrie Burger, where Batgirl was stocked by a hunchback for two issues. And then going straight with the 508, where it's basically Batgirl and Supergirl take on a guy called the Annihilator, who only appears in these three issues. He dies by 510. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's a really good story. I love the fact these two teamed up. And then finally, we have one last run for uh, Batgirl in this book. Yep. Done by Carrie Burkett. Well, we're slowly wrapping up basically Batgirl's time in this book. This was kind of in a way Batgirl's last run in this book. And then afterwards we had the Batgirl special. Deal with Demons. Basically deal with Demon Raiders. Which I think this was their... Yeah, just a quick two-parter for them. And then with 514. She, she, Batgirl takes a girl named Lady Vapor. Who briefly turns Batgirl into a Snake Woman. Yes, seriously. And she appears here for a quick four-part feature. Starts with issue 514, wraps on 517. Yeah, Batgirl br briefly has her leg turned to a, to a snake thing, but she gets cured by the end of the story. Her, her, basically, her part of her outfit gets turned to shorts for one issue. But as for the last two issues of this book, oh boy. Uh, so, takes on uh, someone called Velvet Tiger. Yes, who is a character who later appeared in Batgirl. Not Becker, um, in Wonder Woman. Yeah. Appears there for two issues, and that's it. 
And, oh, by the way, uh, the writer who wrote these last issues was Barbara Kitzel, who basically wrote this issue under her maiden name. And finally, the final thing to talk about here is the Batgirl special. Mm-hmm. So yes, with this, I'll be done with this one. I know this is a long video because I mentioned before, this will be lengthy because I'm talking about a lot of comics. The Batgirl special itself is by Barbara Ketzel and Barry, and uh, by her husband, Barry Kitson. Uh, mostly put, it's Batgirl's last case. Uh, she basically t deals with an old case from her Tetra Comics from this one, where a guy from her past comes back and deals with another, another criminal, which... Her whole thing is killing uh, guys who've been abusing her, their wives and getting away with it. And apparently, the, the, this guy here who returns to the story, yeah, this guy's name is uh, Comrade, and we also have Slash. The female criminal, I love the costume for this character, but yeah, it's sad though the fact this character was just arrested and just never seen again, never mentioned ever again. Yeah, and then after these two are defeated, Barbara retires. Now, why did she retire in this story, you might ask? Well, because, of course, DC was preparing for a big a big graphic novel coming out in 1988. A graphic novel known as Batman the Killing Joke by Alan Moore and Brian Ballard. Where, Bar where Barbara Gordon got shot, stripped naked, uh, by the Joker. There was also a rumor for decades the fact that he may have raped her, which is not true, by the way. There was no evidence to prove the fact that he did. All he did was take pictures of her when she was butt naked and wounded. And this led to her being in a wheelchair for the next 20 years. Until Flash went basically got her out of the wheelchair and had been very Oh, she was, it was only temporary. She, got, she has cybernetics in her body, allows her to walk now. Yep, but uh, but when it comes to these two particular particular, um, love the stories here. I do recommend it. You may have to pay a little much basically on this one, but I feel like talking about these issues. But oh, because of the fact I'm talking for an hour, I was gonna do my hero next, but I've been talking for an hour. I need to go do something. I need to basically address my voice now. So yes, um, I give the Batgirl and Rob and Brian down those books. A 10 out of 10. Also, with these issues in particular, uh, in the case of the 500s, well, basically, when I get a chance to cover these more, it's basically more covering for that one. But yeah, let's be pretty much in particular view. Next up, one more One Piece re review, and then um, one more uh, Comic Corner, which hopefully this one will be, that won't be as long as this one was, but I had warned you this would be long because talking about a ton of comic books for this one, but now. I'm going to rest my voice and move on to something else. Okay? Until this next video. Bye.